So let's get finished touching up our earrings that we used our Dollar Tree markers to color on. They dried fabulously. So now what we're gonna do is do the edges, paint the backs. We're gonna give them a gloss. I'm not sure if it's gonna be both pair or one. I know I said I was gonna leave them kind of this um, matte color that they are just from coloring, but I'm just not sure. So anyway, we're gonna decide, stay tuned. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up. So I'm gonna go ahead right quick and color in the edges. And I'm just gonna use the dark blue marker to do that. I was gonna use paint, but I figured since we've done marker this whole time, there's no reason to now turn around and start using paint because I wanna stick with one medium. So just gonna do that. Now the wood grain on the edges of the wood, I'm sorry, the grain on the edges of the woods, it's like a little rough, like you can tell that it was rough cut around the edges and it's not necessarily even. So I'm gonna go around it with the blue marker and then I believe I'm gonna trace around it again with black, just to be sure we get all the indentions and everything filled in and have a great coverage of color. And I'm just using the white marker from Dollar, from the Jot uh, markers from Dollar Tree. Again, this pack came with 10 markers and they have really great saturation of colors. I did mention in the video, the ones that I used, um, some of those had, in the thinner markers, some of the darker colors were a little drier, like the navy blue, and I forget the other color, but you'll see it in the video. So depending on the age of the markers, I don't know, maybe how long they've been at the store or just the quality, not all of them will paint with the same quality, but overall, I feel like I'm pleased with how they turned out. So I'm just going over the dark blue with the black marker to fill in any of the spaces and to give it like a clean edging. Oh my gosh, do y'all feel like this week is like flying by or what? I can't even believe it's Memorial Day weekend. I'm like, how did that happen? <laughs> Cause I, I think I'm used to it being on the, um, the 31st or something like that. I don't know, it kind of caught me off guard. So anyway. We're gonna finish doing the edges and I am probably gonna paint the back because I don't wanna use up all my marker um, color in the back because I wanna be able to use this for other art stuff. And again, I share it with you. I'm gonna see how many projects I can get done using the markers before the ink runs out so I can kind of have an idea of you know how much you should get out of the marker. So I'm gonna try not to get this on the red. It looks like I'm gonna have to use the red marker to touch up down there on the bottom because right there, you notice like there's a white spot. So I'm gonna carry that down a little bit further. And I noticed that I got a little bit of black over there on the corner, but that's okay. We're gonna keep going. And I'm gonna go over this red one more time just to darken it up. And I'm gonna do that edge while I'm down there. I'm gonna wipe the marker on the paper just in case some black from touching down there may have gotten on it. So these markers, like I said last night, or in part one, which was last night, they don't bleed, which I really like that. At least they don't bleed into each other. And I only have that one little black mark on my finger from where I had just touched it when it was wet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that front dry. Oh, I didn't do these edges, did I? So we're gonna do the edges of this one Let's see how the chunky pink marker does. I didn't try that one yesterday. Let's test it on the paper. It's a nice thick marker, it's a cool color. So that's how it looks on the edging. So I'm gonna do the edging of this earring. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and drill the holes after we do this. And then after I drill the holes, I'm gonna paint the back. And I'm gonna drill from the back so I make sure that we don't damage our design on the front or split the wood on the front. 
because these thin pieces of wood I mentioned to you before, they can split. And sometimes they do split, which is very frustrating. And depending on how they split, you can fix it, but it's like doing double work, which sometimes in arts and crafts, you know, you gotta do double work. So look, that's pretty. And I'm just being quiet because my family is still, well, not my family, my children, and they are my family. <laughs> are still sleeping or resting. They um today and tomorrow is the last day of school and summer break will officially begin for them. So I'm super excited for them. Oh yeah, and the puppy, we pretend that he goes to puppy school too. So his summer break will officially begin as well. And he's not a puppy. I call him a puppy. He's actually four, which means in people years, he's 28. So he's really grown. But anyway... We call him our puppy. And his name is Bolt, like a lightning bolt, like the movie Bolt. And we named him that because he's so fast when he runs and he's just so cute. But of course, we didn't know he'd be fast when we initially got him, but I guess we prophesied that over his little puppy life. And it's sweet because when we pray, he'll get in a circle and pray with us. So look how pretty that came out. Let's drill our holes. And... Then what I'm going to do is I'm not going to um, paint the gloss on and I'm not going to use the triple thick. I don't believe I'm going to actually use the Mod Podge Dimensional Magic because I like how it came out on the other earrings that I did. I think I'm just going to do a lighter coat, but I love the high gloss that it gave it and just the dimension that it gave to it. I'm going to use it on this pair. I'm not sure about this pair, but let's see. So you already know I have the Dremel Light. And I will do my best to remember to put the model number. So if you want to go and pick one up, I got mine from Lowe's. I'm going to stand over this so we can make sure. And you can put a little dent in there. I don't want to stand up. But I want to make sure that we get a clear hole. And then, of course, what we always do is we can use this hole as a template for the other earring as well. I'm just cleaning it off. And the reason I wanted to go ahead and put the hole in the earring is because if I do it after I gloss it, then I run the risk of messing up the gloss and messing up the design. So if I go ahead and do it now... I'm just pushing any frayed wood through. And so I'm just going to touch up that little edge right there with the marker after we get finished. But we got a really great hole, really clean. I like that. And then we're going to use this one as a template. So all I'm doing is lining up that hole for the other earring so we get a perfectly straight, symmetrical hole for our jewelry. So now we have two matching holes. I'm gonna do the other pair as well. And that way we can touch up any paint that's needed. And also by doing this before I paint the back, I don't have to worry about messing up the paint on the back or the clear coat when we go to put that on there either. So I'm gonna put that off to the side. Let's go ahead and drill the hole for this one. I guess we could probably do them at the same time. You just have to have good pressure and make sure they're aligned together. And you wanna make sure you have good pressure because if not, if they slip out of your hand, then they could cut the top and damage the top across here and then basically the earring. It wouldn't be ruined because you'd be able to put a bead at the top, make it a hanging post and do something else, but you don't wanna to have to rethink your design, you know, once you get it all laid out. So we have our holes done for our earrings. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go off camera, touch up the brown, and then we're gonna paint the back and put the gloss on. So for the blue earrings, of course, the ones that have like a blue marker on the front, I'm going to go ahead and paint the backs of those 
a really pretty blue color and I'm just gonna use the cap of the paint to paint with. And we're gonna do two coats just so we have a nice finish on the back. I'm gonna do my best to be careful not to get anything over on the other side of our design. And I don't really need to go very close to the edges because we already did the edges with the marker, remember? So we already have a finished edge, so that should be really good. I'm just going in the opposite direction to make sure we get the grains done really well. And I chose the navy blue just so it'd be a nice, pretty contrast or um, connection to the front so it makes it, you know, really uniformed. Plus, I thought it was a really pretty blue color that matches the marker on the front. I shouldn't have said contrast, more of monochromatic. That's probably the word I'm looking for. It makes it really uniformed and streamlines the design. I think that's really pretty. So we're gonna let those sit and dry and then I'm gonna get a color for the backs of this pair and I'm gonna use a fuchsia. So let me grab that and be right back. So I decided to really quickly color the backs of these and we're gonna let them dry and then I'll come back and we'll do the glaze and add the hooks and we'll be finished. Look at that pretty pink. So this pink is by Deco Art Americana. It's acrylic paint and it's in the shade Dragon Fruit. Love it, really pretty. I think it's a beautiful blend for the design on the front. Very pretty. I was gonna do a bubblegum pink, but I said, no, let's do this color. So that way, again, if someone wears makeup and they wear these earrings, they don't have to worry about, you know, the makeup messing up the back of their earrings. And when y'all sell jewelry, do y'all put some type of care instructions in with the jewelry. I'm just curious. I know some people that do that. So then we're going to paint the back of this one and we will be finished in terms of letting these dry. And then we'll come back and we'll do the gloss after they dry. I'm sorry, I know y'all can hear the noises of the morning in my home, but that's what makes being in a home a home, right? Okay, so we'll be back after these dry. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and use our Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. And I mentioned to you I have used this before, and this is what it actually looks like once it dries. So it dries to like a really pretty glossy finish, kind of glass-like, which I totally love. Here's another pair of the galactic ones I did. And I just really love the shine. So I just am so honestly undecided about doing this pair. So let's start out, I actually had bent my little tip by accident, but let's start out doing it on the square pair. So I do have to use my poker tool to, I'm have to find it, stand by. To reopen the edge of it because when you try to put it back in, it has this weird little hole. I don't know if you can see down in there or not, but you have to fit the cap back in there. And if you don't, it bends your, your nozzle. So just have to open it back up. I love that little pokey tool. So now the other thing is this also has, of course, lines in it because we burned it, obviously. So I'm going to start the dimensional magic inside those lines. So that way when it dries, it doesn't dry unevenly outside of those ridges. So I'm gonna put some there first. Hopefully that makes sense. So in other words, it won't just settle around those lines and not fill in. So again, I've never used the dimensional Mod Podge over marker. So we're gonna see how it ends up drying. 
I'm just doing an even layer and you want to make sure it's on a really flat surface. So because this is paper that I have taped down to my work area, they're not, um, my work area is not perfectly flat. So I'm going to move them off of here after I finish putting everything on so that it can dry evenly. And I'm trying not to put as thick of coat as I have before because I don't want it to take so long to dry. And not only that, it actually took a couple of days to get completely dry, I think because I did the coat so thick. So let's do that. And I noticed that some of the color did come off on the nozzle. So I'm hoping it won't bleed over anything, into anything, but I guess we're gonna find out. <laughs> so that's what it looks like. And again, if you have any air bubbles, I forgot a spot. If you have any air bubbles, you'll have the chance to put those out using your tool on the end. If you have a pokey tool or, you know, any type of sharp object or point that you have, you can pop the bubbles. So let's do the next one. And again, I'm going inside the ridge lines of where I made the burn marks with the wood burning tool. And I noticed it was only the red when it kind of got on the end of the nozzle. But I am going to wipe it off right quick just in case. I, I don't want the colors to bleed. But I realized or I remembered that I touched the red up this morning. So that could be why that did that. It probably isn't because the markers are going to bleed. It's because, remember, I touched the red up when I was doing the edges. So that's probably where that came from. But luckily, all the other colors are darker than the red. So we should be good to go as it relates to any bleeding or anything like that. Because I remember last night... Well, on part one, I actually let the markers dry overnight because I wanted to give it a chance to um, seal in and seep into the wood. And even though we probably could get away with not putting a shiny top coat on here, the only reason I wanted to put a shiny top coat is obviously also to seal in the color. So... I think it's gonna be really pretty once that dries. I'm just moving it over to the table so it's on a flat surface. And what do you think? I guess we should go ahead and make these shiny since we're here, right? Let me wipe off the nozzle. I'm gonna fill in the raised areas or recessed areas, I should say. And what we could do is we could do, we could use the Mod Podge matte, which has like a matte finish. Um, but I just feel like because we used markers that we probably should seal the color in. So again, I'm just going to do a light finish. I don't want to do a thick, thick, thick finish. So I'm using the nozzle to spread it across. I'm not letting too much more come out while I'm doing that. I'm just using the nozzle to spread it. So I'm squeezing a little bit out here. I think Caleb had a homeroom call. That's probably what that is. Okay, so I was just talking to my husband right quick. So there we are. We filled in this little section here of that one. And so same thing, we're just gonna make sure it smooths out, spreads out. I would think that you'd have to be careful with lighter colors because I'm not sure, you probably can't tell on my table, but some of the color is on the nozzle. So like I noticed that some of the green color got on the nozzle. I'm just getting out of air bubble that was on there. So you want to be really careful about using the, um, the any type of shine component that you're going to put on the jewelry. You want to be sure to wipe your nozzle off in between use. And you want to be sure like if you're going to have like a white color on here or like a light yellow, any type of light or pastel colors, maybe you want to fill in the, um, the clear gloss. Um, individually. And what I mean by that is like, I let one dry, do the next one, let one dry, do the next one, which could be a little bit time consuming, but at the same time, 
it's worth it to protect, you know, all the time that you put into designing your art. What? I was talking about my face too. My face is good to begin to crap like the mummy. I don't know. It just gets tight. It just gets tight around here. So y'all can hear Pastor Lamb Chop in the background. He's healing up in from he's in recovery from his poison oak. And so now everything is drying up. He thinks he looks like the mummy. I think he's absolutely precious. But I'm sure he's itchy, right? <laughs> so anyway, I'm moving this one over to it's little area to dry as well. Just gonna make sure I got enough of the gloss on the ends. Ooh, a bubble tried to come up. Like, mm-mm, not today, boo. So, you guys, I love it with the gloss. I think it came out really beautiful if I would have just left it plain as well. But the gloss really just gives it that pop of color. So, we're gonna give these time to dry, I would say, a, a few hours. Um, just to be on the safe side. Make sure, again, to put it on a flat surface. Be vigilant to check it every now and again for any air bubbles. And then when we come back, we're going to have a finished product to put some hooks on. And we're going to see the end result of our wood burning earrings. And what I'm praying is that they don't have any type of bleeding or any any errors or anything like that from the, um, the Mod Podge gloss. So stay tuned. So look how beautiful they turned out after we put the gloss on them. They look absolutely incredible. They have a beautiful shine. I mean, who would have thought this markers could create, you know, just such a really pretty color pattern. I think these, I don't know, I don't know which ones are my favorite, but I think they're both beautiful. So let's go ahead and attach the backs. And I got some lever back hooks that we're gonna use, earring findings, and I'll do a haul in my next video to show you just the, um, it'll be just a jewelry findings haul maybe of the things I was able to pick up at Hobby Lobby. I've been wanting some necklace bells and they have in there. Michaels normally doesn't carry them or either they're just um, out of stock when I go. <laughs> so these are my um, slippery pliers. They give me such a hard time. So let me try to have a decent grip on these. There we go, that's better. So here we are, so we got that one on. Look how pretty that is. I think that is just beautiful. Thank God I have another jump ring sitting out because of, I was gonna put it on those, but we'll go ahead and put it on this one. So these were super simple to make, easy. The materials, of course, you already know. It's just stuff you already have on hand if you make jewelry, but if not, you can get everything you need fairly inexpensively. I mean, and you could easily sell these earrings for anywhere from like 10 to $12, you know, depending on what market you're in, but they are incredible. So we're gonna sit those right there. You may hear my son and my husband in the background. They're just chatting it up. So let's go ahead and get this pair done. I wanted to find the same jump ring I had used on those. I'll be right back. So they came out beautiful. I love how they ended up looking. I love the findings that we were able to put on them here at the end. I mean, who would have thought that just wood burning some lines and some markers and then just doing a gloss coat would be so incredibly beautiful. I love how they turned out. And I'm not even sure which one is my favorite pair. I mean, I think that people would scoff these up from your website. They're super classy, super professional, and you can make goo gobs of these in no time at all just drawing lines. I mean, literally that's all we did was we burned lines into the wood, we colored with markers, and voila, here we are. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video, give it a thumbs up. I definitely want you to subscribe to my channel and tell others about it and hit the notification button so you don't miss any of my videos. I share a creative video and a ministry video every Tuesday and Thursday. And I look forward to sharing more of the wood burning tool 
with you all on my next video. I did change the head out on the wood burning tool. This isn't hot cause not plugged in. And I used the cone tool this time. So it looks more of like a point. So I'm excited to see what we can make with that. I think we're gonna do some type of floral design or dots and we'll see what we come up with next. So God bless you all, I'll talk to you soon.